Hey everyone, welcome back to Epicenter Garage. Today I'm going to be talking about four of my cars. My backdated green RSR, my 928, my GTR, and my GTV, Alfa Romeo GTV. Now, on my RSR, I built something which I think is going to be kind of cool. We'll see. I'm going to test it out for the first time. Well, you guys will get a chance to see it, test it out for the first time. Because I'm getting ready to take this car, well, either this car or my 928 over to Porsche Palooza this week over in Eureka Springs. So I built something for this car for night driving because I'll end up doing some of those roads over there at night since the time change, well, it's going to be occurring here pretty soon and it's going to be dark at like 6 or 6.30. So I built something for the front. As you guys can probably guess, it's some lights, but I'll show you here in a second. Or the 928, but the 928 is having its own issues and I'll go over that in a second. Followed closely by the GTR, which is actually up on the lift right now, or I'm getting ready to put it on the lift because I've got to fix an oil leak on that car. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit about my 1974 Alfa Romeo GTV because it's Italian and it, of course, has its own issues as well. So, but I want to first show you what I built for this car because I, I think it's kind of cool. So we'll see. So what I built for my backdated RSR is a... I mean, kind of funky light system. I did this relatively quick, like within just a few hours. So don't judge me on the aesthetics of it, but I think it's gonna work pretty well. So I actually, what I did is I took some ABS, cut some ABS, cause it's fairly flexible. So it can flex with the hood. I put four C suckers on of, of which I think they're rated for like 45 pounds of suction each. So it should easily stay on. I mean, if four of these things will work on a car top carrier, it should certainly work with what five, five LED lights. So basically we'll pull these things off. And so then I use some deals that we have from work uh, to wire this all up with a little breakout board. So I have little XT30 connectors and all of these. It's gonna work on the brights on the RSR. So we're gonna see how this thing looks, and then I can angle these things. And I do have it where it's kind of splayed out a little bit of an angle so I can get light, kind of a pattern of lights. But I've turned one of these on and they're pretty darn bright. Now these are not super expensive. I think they're, I mean, honestly, I hate to admit it. They're probably like $12 a light. So these are very cheap. I can put better lights on this later on. I just want to see if it's going to work. So let's put it on and uh, see what happens. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you before I wipe this eyes. I've been driving this car a lot. So there are bugs all over the front of this thing. What I have done is I went ahead and hooked up an XT60 connector. So when the brights are on, it is going to power through this connector. And this is an XT60 for 60 amps. It'll actually handle more than 60 amps. And I'm not even close to pushing that with these lights. These lights don't pull that many amps. And now this entire car has film protection on it. So those of you out there think, thinking, oh my gosh, you're gonna have wires hitting the car, this or that. I mean, this whole group, I know, I know, but I should say I don't care. I kind of care, but not, not too much. I'm going to line this thing up right about there. I'm going to smash this thing down and start pumping. These sea suckers are pretty awesome. Let me square this up a little bit, a little bit more. I probably have the front of this too darn dirty right now, but that's all right. We're gonna, there we go. And this one. That's not too bad. So let's, now this wire, I'm just gonna have it running off the side. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in right here. Cause what I wanted, I wanted something that was a temporary night driving solution. I have another idea that I'm gonna talk to you guys about at some other point. Uh, even, uh, uh, even a more temporary setup. The neat thing is on these sea suckers, if you guys have ever played around with these things, is that they have a little red tab so you can glance at the back to see if they're losing any suction. That is, as, as the famous words are, that's not going anywhere. I hope not anyway. And then I can come in and I can adjust these a little bit. I can even rotate them out just a bit, just a little bit like that. Oh, I cannot wait for nighttime. This is going to be awesome. Now, I have never turned all of these on at one time. I've only tested one or two of them here and it's pretty darn bright. When I've, I'm here and I shut the lights off, one's pretty bright. <sighs> oh, five of them are, have, to, have to do something. They're, they're certainly gonna be better than just these headlights. So let's turn it on and see what it looks like. Let me go kill the light. Okay, here we go. We're gonna give them a go. And now the, when I hit the bright, boom, let me run around and take a look, see what you guys. Oh, that's not too bad. 
Well, they work okay, and I think they're going to be bright. Well, they're certainly going to be add light to the front or the front of the car, which is going to be fantastic. But the real test is going to be tonight. And then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to kind of adjust. So I think they're adjusted a little bit too up. I probably need to start adjusting these down just a bit because they were shining pretty high up on that wall. But tonight I'll be able to even, I'll probably end up taking these outside ones and kind of turn this one, that angle and this one a little bit and having these three shoot a little bit more forward. But, oh, I don't think. And then we'll do some high speed testing. We'll get up to legal speeds tonight and make sure this thing will stay on. But I think it's, it's going to be pretty solid. I think it's going to be great. And the nice thing is I can take this off. I can put it on any of my 911s as long as I wire it up to the brights, which I'll probably do that on all, all the cars and see how well, like I said, these, these are pretty inexpensive lights. I know there's other, there's kits out there you can buy for these cars that are so much better than these, but I just wanted to build something really cheap. Do, you know, I picked these up, I think I picked these up at Harbor Freight, so they're not, not the best in the world, but we're gonna give it a try. I'm all about trying to do things inexpensively. We'll give it a go, but it should certainly be perfect for Porsche Palooza. So as I stated before, I've been debating a little bit whether or not to drive my backdated RSR or my 1986 and a half 928, which happens to have a manual gearbox, which I love. I've been looking for one of these things for so long. And then a couple years ago, this one popped up for sale in Tennessee. I bought this thing. It was like, I jumped on it right away, grabbed one of my buddies. We flew to Tennessee not even to look at, I already went ahead and said, hey, I'm gonna buy it, because finding 86 and a half manual cars, you guys probably know out there, is not the easiest thing in the world. And this exact color I wanted, as you can tell by many of the cars that I own, red, black interior, that's like my, I mean, I love any car in any color, but oh man, especially the 928 for me, red, black interior is exactly what I wanted. And finding one with the, that color combination with the manual transmission, uh, I've been looking for quite some time and this one popped up, flew in there, we drove it back. I think we made it within a day. I think we flew in early in the morning, hustled it all the way back, cannonballed it all the way back that night. And I love this car. It's 55, 56,000 miles. It's been fantastic up to this point. Now, you know, 928s, they get kind of a bad rap because, man, these things were just going down, 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 down in value. Now they're starting to make that climb. And there's so many people out there that said, Oh, 928s are junk. They'll never be collectible. Nobody really wants them. No, no, no. I, I knew, I've always loved these cars and I knew one day, and that's not the reason why I buy cars. I buy cars because I, I love cars. But I knew one day that, you know, the, the, the time was gonna come for these, time, for these 928s and that day is happening right in front of our eyes, especially for the manual cars, but even the automatics. One of my good friends had an automatic and I, drew, I drove that car before and that is a great car. You know, I always, you know, sometimes I poo poo on automatics a little bit, but man, even a 928, because that's what these cars were built for, long distance. I mean, when we drove that car all the way back from Tennessee back to Kansas, I could, I could have stayed on the road and gone another five or six hours, no problem, because they're such a comfortable car, and you can haul stuff in them. And this car, I don't want this whole video to be about 928, and I don't want to necessarily do what I say, a deep dive into this car, but I'll take you through it real quick, because all 928s, there's some super nice ones out there, but most of them by this point, they have the little quirks or little issues with all of them. And this one certainly you know, has its own little things. You know, the dash is sometimes, this one has a crack on the top. And of course the main dash right here has a crack on it. The front, and which I'll show you here in a second, is the coloring on the bumpers between the, 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 the metal and the plastic sometimes discolors on the plastic a little bit, but that's okay. I mean, this one was just, the interior is really nice. The seats in these cars are, oh my gosh, they're just absolutely fantastic. You talk about the ultimate road trip Porsche, uh, the 911s, you guys know I love lining out 911s, but the 928, this is the serious like cruise missile for the highway. I drove it last night, which is the reason why the headlights are up. I just kind of pulled it in here quickly. Um, but yeah, so the power steering system is starting to grow and I've noticed it's starting to leak a little bit. So, man, yeah, it's going to be time for this car to get up on the lift. Now, I've worked on 928s a little bit. On this car, I did replace the front rotors and the brake pads and, of course, done all the oil change and, and all the fluids, the brake fluids, all that. But I've never really, really worked literally intensive or done heavy maintenance on a 928. So I don't know if the steering rack, I can just, you know, repair it or replace it um, or re obviously I'll probably just rebuild it. But I don't know what kind of process that's going to be like. So we're going to give that a go and, and see how, 
how well it comes out. They open up the hood here. Oh, and of course, now I'm looking at the front bumper, and I was telling you guys about it before. You can see here, it is a little bit mismatched from the ABS. I'm assuming it's ABS for the plastic front bumper to the actual metal parts in the car. The paint just... It's just, it just starts to fade, and I've seen this issue on a lot of 928s. It's one of the things, the first things I looked at when I was looking at various 928s, is, and so many of them have that issue. So I am planning on taking this front bumper off, reshooting this front bumper to better match the guard's red. But as I open up the hood here, now, oh, also one other thing I have done to this car is I did modify the exhaust, because stock, these cars, they sound pretty good, but not awesome. And I've heard so many of so many people, and I've looked at enough videos on YouTube to realize I was like, man, I got to put a different exhaust on this car, which is what I've done. I went ahead and put an X pipe on this car, bigger, bigger exhaust tubing, as well as I did a muffler delete, which now makes this car sound so much better than stock. What we have here is a five liter, um, four valve, 32 valve, I should say, um, engine. 300 horsepower, they were rated, I think, what the US ones are right around 280, but the exhaust really made a big difference on this car. I can definitely tell by the seat of the pants, it is a faster car than it was before. And now we're over to my 1993 Nissan GTR. Now, some of you guys might have been remembered, I did a lot of maintenance on this car, replacing coils, all that type of stuff. Been enjoying this car a lot. And at the same time, or very shortly after I did all the maintenance on it, I went ahead and put a Gretti uh, remote oil filter relocation system on this car, simply because changing the oil on this car, it sucks. Now, when I was looking for a, an oil relocation kit for this car, I decided to choose the Gretti system, which I kind of regret now a little bit because as I started reading online, people were like, well, the tubing is a little bit too short. You got to replace the tubing. And then when I got it, I was like, ah, I'll give it a try. So you have to disassemble or take the entire intake system off, which is, which is a pain, not because it's difficult, it's simply because there's a, just a lot to it in order to get down and reach down below. But before, what you'd have to do is you have to reach completely down below, all the way down here, grab the filter, which of course goes in the engine block sideways, and when you pull it off, oil goes all the way down, gets over, all, all over everything. You have to try to get the filter up or drop it down below the car, which is a pain. So I went ahead and put it, mounted it just like Greddy says, but now it's starting to leak. Now I have to go through the whole process again. I have to take the entire intake off. I'll probably end up putting new intake gaskets on because I really don't want to reuse those because they're crushed gaskets. So it is back, I don't want to say that to the drawing board, but now I'm going to redo this and I'm going to redo it to the point where I'm going to, instead of putting the little tubing on with little, little tube clamps, I'm going to put AN fittings on. I'm going to remachine the mount down there as well as here. And I'm going to put all AN fittings and just Use, use the mounts they have, but I'm going to reconfigure everything. And now we're on to my 1974 Alfa Romeo GTV, 2000 GTV that is. And to say I've always wanted these cars is a complete understatement. You guys already know. I mean, I, I say that all the time. Oh, I've wanted this car. I've wanted. There's a lot of cars that I've wanted. And I've been very fortunate to be able to buy. And this is one of those cars that, you know, if there's some cars out there that you've heard fantastic things on, whether it's a Porsche GT3 RS or 944 Turbo, and you're like, you know, you hear all these great things, and then you get one, and I'm not saying about those cars, but you're like, yeah, this is a really good car, and you love it, and you're like, everything they said was, was spot on. And then there's some cars that exceed all your expectations, and the GTV, this car right here, this is that car. Oh my gosh. I mean, people, you know, all the reviews and you see different, different videos people have done on these cars and they fall in love with them. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. It can't be that awesome. I'm telling you guys, these are, these are everything they're cracked up to be. And they built a ton of GT. Now, this body style has been around for a long time for Alfa Romeo, but these cars are absolutely gorgeous in my opinion. Now, one of the things I love about these cars is I would go up to Road America or Vintage Racing, and these cars are always, these cars are very, did extremely well in both SCCA racing and vintage racing. And I love the look, that, and of course, when they race and they always take the bumpers off the front, and I love that racy look. And so that's one thing that I've done on this one. I've removed the bumpers and, of course, done a few other modifications. But this car, just like all Italian cars, are not without their flaws. And I, I don't want to say flaws, but maybe maintenance. They're sometimes maintenance heavy. So there's a lot of things I have to do to this car, one of which, and I won't get into that too much, I've got a wheel bearing going out, in the, at least I think it's a wheel bearing, so I'm running down the road 60 miles an hour, I hear this wah, 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 wah. And so that's normally a wheel bearing, it could be. I'm hoping it's not a drive shaft like out of phase. Um, 
it could be a number of things, but it's coming from this, this area back here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna end up putting up on a lift. I've got a bunch of parts. As you guys know, what I usually do, what I should do is put the car up on the lift, pull it apart, pull the back axle out, or at least get the wheel bearings out, take a look at them and be able to tell if that is. But no, in normal me fashion, I go ahead and order the parts that I think are probably gonna be wrong. All right, as I get in this thing, I'll show you here. And oh, sorry, I get distracted. Because these cars are absolutely gorgeous inside. Just the wood, the, the trim, it's so Italian. And everything they say about these cars as far as driving, how easy they are to drive, this has to be the easiest manual transmission car ever to drive. You can just drive it with your fingertips. The steering is so light. The gear shift mechanism is just, I mean, it just goes into gear like, as they say, like butter. It is fantastic. And the way the gauges look, the gauge pod, oh, I just love it. But once again, it is, it is, does have a few little faults. The electronics are not that great, or electricals, I should say. The turn signal, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Turn signals do not work. Uh, there's a module down here that starts to basically they burn up. So I have a new module to put in. It's a little updated version. So I've got to do that. And that's in my box. There's a number of different things I have to do to this car. But overall, oh, I, I don't even care about things that are wrong with this car. It's so much fun to drive. Oh, and you guys got to check out the engine because the engine and these just just like the interior, how gorgeous the interiors are, the engine and this car has to be one of the most beautiful engines ever produced. And I would put it in the league with any Ferrari engine, even SHO engines, which we'll get into eventually some point. Check this engine out, you guys. I mean, for a four cylinder, this engine with the header cam, got your carburetors here, you got your Weber carburetors. I believe, I think I've got either 38s or 40s on this car, I can't remember. But these cars, not only are they fantastic to drive, but they sound fantastic as well. They're, these cars are not about the exhaust. These cars are all about these right here. The intake sound from this car is glorious. The best ever of any car that I have. Honestly, you guys, the intake noise on this tops everything. Now this engine, it has a few little dress up things on it. Maybe some performance modification. It does have a different, different cams in it. And it also has headers that you can see down here as well. So horsepower stock this is a two liter. I want to say they're right around 130 horsepower. And this one's probably maybe putting out 145, maybe 150. It will flat get up and go. It's not too bad because these cars are extremely lightweight. And the torque, what really surprises me is the torque. I think Alpha really built these engines as far as the bore and the stroke to provide a lot of torque. And certainly like in third gear, this car has no problem coming out of a corner and just really laying the power down or even the, laying the torque down if that's even a term. So one of the things I wanted to do today was take this car out, put some cameras on so you guys could hear what this car sounds like. But the weather outside is absolutely terrible. You wouldn't think in November that we'd get hail, but it is raining and I think it's getting ready to hail. So I probably won't be taking this thing out. I promise in an episode very soon, I will. Oh man, we got too many cars, too much maintenance to do. But once again, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like or subscribe button and we'll see you guys again real soon.